Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Palmer's Cardinals going up against Tolzien's Colts. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Arizona Cardinals. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this game, <laughs> and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. In his 15th year now from USC, Carson Palmer will be the man under center. He'll turn 38 in December, and there was some discussion in the offseason about him possibly contemplating retirement. Elected to come back, though. His big right arm, exactly what they want in Arizona. They love to play the downfield game, throwing it to their big-time receivers. His first carry. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And it'll be second and 12. Okay, there's a tone setter. First play from scrimmage. Stuff him in the backfield. You know what they were doing last night in the hotel room? <laughs> Visualizing exactly <laughs> I that. That's what they were thinking about. Making that play. Having leverage. Lower than the offensive lineman. Getting into the offensive backfield. Knocking someone down. Just what you said. Setting the tone early for this game. Jeez, you are fired up. When I see a play like that, I can't help it. They'll fake the give to Ellington. Now it's Palmer. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. John Simon in from his linebacker's spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, it was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Palmer gets him set, third and long for the Cardinals after the sack. Out of the gun, Palmer. And he goes down, it's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Here's Andy Lee now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. Oh, 
And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. This is taken at about the 14. They'll be hard-pressed to match that one. That a 65-yard punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be brought out by their quarterback, seventh-year man from Wisconsin, Scott Tolsey. Only three starts in those seven years, but he's been a very reliable backup, understands the offense, knows how to distribute the ball appropriately. He's got a chance to be a good starter for them. They go play action here on first down. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 30 yards there. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. the first carry now for Frank Gore. There goes Frank Gore. And he takes it all the way down to the three. A huge play that time for the Colts. 45 yards on the ground. Well, welcome to the party. First carry of the game. How about that? And just think, as far as he's concerned, he's just getting warmed up. set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll try and run. This is Turbin. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown Indianapolis. Robert Turbin, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Colts are going to take a first quarter lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Here's Britton Golden now on the return. <laughs> Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. 
And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Now a play fake here on first down. And incomplete on the deep ball. And let's look now at the offensive starters for the Cardinals. I could go on and on about Larry Fitzgerald and his numbers, which are considerable, and everyone knows that. But the thing I keep coming back to, he never quits seeking knowledge. Every year, he works with former NFL players who were great wide receivers in order to improve his game, watches a ton of film, always curious, always finding a way to adapt and improve his game. Second and 10, it's Palmer again. And Gresham has it, left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there, 22. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now Palmer on first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Palmer to throw again. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. And let's go through the starting defense for Indianapolis. When you look back at the 2016 season on defense for the Indianapolis Colts, when you look at the raw numbers, you're not impressed. 30th overall in total defense. So what they're trying to improve upon is playmakers. They've got to have some guys who can offset those types of numbers with making big plays and taking the ball away from the opposition. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. This is Ellington. They find some open field here. And eventually taken down, but how about that athletic spin move we saw? Gives him the first down yardage. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one, and let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap, jump too quickly.
Throwing is Palmer. Going to throw right side here. Complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. One yard is the gain there. It'll bring up second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. And here comes play number six on this drive. And we've got movement by one of the big boys up front for Arizona. Flag comes in. That's going to set him back five yards. So what will they do on the ground, through the air? Let's see, second and nine. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. And that'll set them back five. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets stopped up at the 31 after a gain of maybe a yard. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On third down, Palmer. Man open left side is Brown. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Now on fourth down, Bruce Arians will send out his field goal unit. This from 44 yards out, left hash. And the 42-year-old veteran's kick is up and good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. to three. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. Now after the made field goal, here's Dawson back out now to send this one away on the kickoff. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And the Colts coming out now. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll start on the ground with Gore. And an alley to run. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. 
Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, say, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Here's the offense, and if you're the defense, Charles, you really have to focus on that guy that's highlighted on the screen. You're talking about pure speed. T.Y. Hilton can get down the middle of the field and really stretch a defense. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. And the 11 defensive starters for Arizona. With the Cardinals, you get a package of pressure, and that's on any down, any distance. They always want more people near the line of scrimmage, more people attacking the quarterback. And then back behind that, they have a lot of different looks in their secondary, and they can't wait to get Tyron Matthew back on the field full time. He's their wild card because they can play him at safety or at corner. Third down now following the run. Now Tolzien. And that is incomplete. So possession one ended in six. Possession two likely going to end in a punt. Yeah, that's okay. They just got to get back to what they worked on in the opening drive and continue to make a few adjustments along the way. It won't be exact because the defense will make a few adjustments themselves. Just get back to your game plan. As the punt team now is this one sent away. And he didn't quite have the bag spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Cardinal offense here ready to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. down and that is incomplete here Jaron Brown the intended target that'll bring up second down but not to get too over critical there because he knows what he's doing but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that I don't think you're being overly critical there you're just analyzing it and he gets those shoulders right that pass would go from incomplete to complete unable to connect on the first down pass play now it's second down They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Again, they run with Ellington. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down.
And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here's Palmer. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's Ellington. A good move on the carry, but still brought down just inside the 40. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Now Palmer to throw on second down. And that'll be incomplete. The tight end, Jermaine Gresham, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength. And he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. To throw on third down. Palmer going for the deep ball. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright. And this score will stay right where it is. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, set this one off target. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Wow, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Play action fake. They'll look to throw. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Josh Morrow in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. This Cardinals pass rush in 2016 got home 48 times. That's a pretty good number. A very good number. Led the league. Is it just because the dudes that they had or the scheme or both or what? It's always the dudes first, but their scheme, attacking, pressure, they'll continue to pile up the sacks. Second down, this is Gore. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. 
Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. So it's third and long, and defensively, not a real surprise. They're in the dime. Tolzien. And he finds his man, Kamar Aiken. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Meanwhile, we will not get another play as time will run out on this first quarter. 7-3 the score. The NFL on EA Sports continues right after this message. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. time they say uh-uh as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage call it a loss of two on the play and that's going to bring up a third down wow that play got shut down in a hurry as soon as the snap came you can see defensively they were just closing in that was going nowhere yeah you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space a little bit of time so you can make a move there was none there for him and on third and eight defensively they're going to beef up the secondary six defensive backs They'll look to throw here. And he's got Moncrief. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Here we go now. Green, 39. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Carlos Dansby leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. They'll throw. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree. 
as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Colts on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and 16. He'll drop to throw. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Dante Moncrief, 28 yards. And the Colts are able to grow their lead. And when the quarterback drops and has a guy that wide open in the end zone, his eyes have to get just as big as grapefruits. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, this is the easiest throw you're going to get. And you're going to get the benefit of a touchdown on top of it. Make that throw. Terry now for the point after. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one and it'll come out to the 25. We get a glance at the Colts defense as they work their way back on the field. And they got to be feeling good about forcing that long missed field goal the last go around. And you know what upsets a kicker more than anything? It's missing a kick they think they can make and feeling like the other side believes that they had something to do with it. And it doesn't matter to those guys on defense. I know they're taking full credit. Yep, we forced him into the miss, and they're going to ride that confidence the rest of the way. We'll see if the kicker is able to get his confidence back as well. On the ground, Ellington. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. On second down, here's Palmer. Airing this one out for Fitzgerald. Well, oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll be taken down deep into Indianapolis territory. Two veterans there. Palmer to Fitzgerald. 68 yards. I know one adage that actually held up last year. Age is just a number. And I'm talking about Larry Fitzgerald. 33 years old. Led the NFL in receptions with 107. Third oldest guy to lead the NFL in receptions. Two guys did it at age 34, Jerry Rice and MacArthur Lane. Jerron Brown, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Cardinals have cut it to within a score. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. 
And he's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. So a 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. Quan Bray now to return this football. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And it's second down. I like the boldness and I like that they took a shot downfield, but it was well covered. He's able to get a hand in and knock it away. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Here's Gore. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. Second down a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short after the incompletion on first down. It's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. The Colts on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Looking to throw. To the right side to Aiken. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Well, they convert on third with a gain of 22. Well, for teams that like to play man coverage, running corner routes can be tough on them because of the ability of getting into it. Sometimes you're squaring it off. Sometimes you're just rounding it. Sometimes there's a fake. Sometimes there's not. That makes it very, very difficult for a DB to stay with it. throw here and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Chandler Jones from that outside linebacker spot he's able to get in there for a loss of nine Let's go! Ah! 
And he's going to be met at about the 43. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. So the contact came before the ball got there, and the flag is thrown. Timing is everything, isn't it? And it's so hard to cover these great receivers. They have such great body control, and they can fake you out. In this case, as you described, got there before the ball got to the receiver. Penalty flag had to come out. And now the offense operates in the red zone. Robert Turbin. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Robert Turbin with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Colts add on to their lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, it, if that's all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. That time, a six-play drive and a nine-yard run on the end of it. Kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again, here's Carson Palmer heading back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing, and I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field, try to make sure his teammates come along with him, and he feels like if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, a little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. On first down, it's Palmer. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Second down here after the incomplete pass. To throw again, Palmer. 
And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. The two old workhorses, Palmer and Fitzgerald, connecting there for a Cardinal first. Anytime you call man coverage against Larry Fitzgerald, you're really holding your breath as a defensive guy because his ability to run such precise routes and use that big frame that he has, that body against you, it's going to be very difficult to break passes up against him. Yeah, when you make nine Pro Bowls in your first 12 years, you might want to give him a little bit more coverage than that. Yeah, it's not just athletic ability. He's a thinking man's receiver as well. Here's Palmer to throw. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Good positioning, and it's picked off. Now, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball, and I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. This field general once more leading his offense back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. They go play action here on first down. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. Josh Morrow in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down. Then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back. But it's a big play. They've got to hold up. The Colts on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and 17. Let's go! Now back to throw. And he's going to be wrapped up and driven down. Carlos Dansby in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The Colts send out their punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. 
Getting set to go again. Here's Carson Palmer heading back onto the field. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to write the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with a quarterback once where he actually ran out onto the field first ahead of everyone else just to say, guys, let's go. Try and create that energy, create that spark. Well, so far, he has one touchdown, one interception. He'll be looking for that second touchdown now. Now Ellington. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Even with the nice move, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice gain like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you've got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. his first carry and unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37 give him a couple on the carry there second and eight looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays yeah you took the words right out of my mouth so far four plays in this drive all four on the ground two minutes to go here in the first half we'll come back to indianapolis right after this We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. left side and he'll get up to the 43 yard line six yards is the pickup and that'll lead to a third down third and two now Palmer and able to find John Brown and he'll be taken down but not before getting this inside the 30 that goes for a gain of 31 Strength throwing the football downfield has never been an issue for this big guy. I still remember the first time I met him. He was playing for USC, and when I got introduced to him, I thought I was meeting their starting tight end, not their starting quarterback. Such a presence, Carson Palmer. Very much so. Has had it ever since he entered campus there and still has it today.
First and ten, it's Palmer. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Second and ten now, and it's Palmer. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the ten. Palmer to Brown, and the Cardinals move the chains. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and, of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, and now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. set of downs here. Throwing again here, Palmer. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. Second and ten. It's Palmer again. And out of bounds all the way down at the two-yard line. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. to throw again. He's to the 10. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And a stoppage here. A timeout before this third down play takes place. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. The Cardinals on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and five. To throw again, it's Palmer. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. A great effort there from six yards away. And the Cardinals draw a bit closer. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Now Dawson for the extra point. And he's got it to make this a 21-17 game. Hey, 
So that one a long 11 play drive. And it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona. Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And we take some time to spotlight T.Y. Hilton now. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part. But they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers would tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game, though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. Now Tolzien, and he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Tolzien, over the middle complete, that's Doyle, and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down, and now we won't see a play on first down, we're going to get a timeout instead, as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. And we're back, the offense had a chance to talk things over, and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here we go now. He'll look to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Let's go! Back to throw now on second and ten. hit but they'll say it's incomplete Kamar Aiken the intended receiver and that takes us from second to third down well the great coach has said football is really a simple game rush theirs protect yours and he's talking about those guys throwing the football in this situation the rush won hitting the quarterback and forcing him into an incompletion they'll look to throw Robert Turbin, now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock.
And now a first down following that long gain. to throw and that will be incomplete four ticks left here on the clock had an open man that time but ended up putting a little too much heat on it don't you think partner absolutely just needed a touch more air under it instead he fired an absolute bullet so with four seconds to go in the half here's the field goal unit onto the field it'll be a 49 yard attempt from the left hash So we hit halftime here in Indianapolis with the Colts on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Colts are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Cardinals didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. Colts on offense early in the first. Turbin's gonna look for space, and this two-play drive goes for a TD as they get out to a 7-0 lead. Now early in the second quarter, here a throw deep down the field is caught, and he'll go in for the score. Colts push their lead to 11. We go to the second quarter. Palmer's got the completion here, and this play will go for six, closing the gap to four. Colts have the football midway through the second. Turbin's going to show off his strength, and he counts off the six-play drive with the score. The lead now at 11. Third down, inches to go. Carson Palmer hooking up with the speedster, John Brown. And he'll be tackled at the 26-yard line. Cardinals now later on the drive. Palmer's going to find his mark. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. Green, 39. Green. The third quarter starts with a run by Gore. And it worked his way across the 30 to the 32. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Second down following the run. Again they run, again it's Gore. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of two, now third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Yeah. 
The Colts on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This will be third and five. They'll set up to throw. And he's got his man, Hilton. And a big 32-yard play on third. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Play fake here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. near turnover but the offense recovers it now they'll try to regroup on second off the play fake he'll look to throw and the pressure gets to him again Josh Morrow in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon and that's his second sack of the game but this player disruptive in all phases whether he's going upfield coming underneath you name it he's a big time guy you have to block Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. They'll drop the throw. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Marcus Golden in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. He may not be a household name, but Marcus Golden plays with such passion, such fury, and some pretty good pass rush moves at 12 and a half sacks in 2016. Tied for third in the NFL, former second round pick out of Missouri. Yeah, that's turned into a little bit of a uh, pass rushing factory, isn't it? Got a lot of guys who can get there from Mizzou. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Able to fight through one tackle. Now after the punt on that play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll get across the 20, but only to about the 22-yard line. A gain of three, second down. 
Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. They'll fake the give to Ellington. Now it's Palmer. Trying to lay one up deep. And got his man complete. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. We just saw him hit a big play there on a deep post. And most of the time, the post isn't available because you usually have defenders in the middle of the field. But if you throw enough curls and crossing routes and underneath routes, <laughs> I know from experience, they get tired of watching those balls get caught. They start to creep up a little bit, and that's when you can hit them big over the top. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll throw on first down here with Palmer. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. That throw good for four. It's second down. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. The Cardinals on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and six. Again, it's Palmer. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, torn back across his body. Picked off by Darius Butler. So their woes on offense continue. That's the second pick thrown here in the third quarter. And we know it was ill-advised, but that was an opportunity to help them get back into the game. Instead, he throws another interception, and now their task is even tougher. Focus now shifts to Frank Gore. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. On first down, it's Gore. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Now it's Gore. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Let's go! They'll look to throw here. Is incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The Colts send out their punter. He's been terrific so far.
And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get them down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And yeah, nice yardage right off the bat here as he's up to about the 24-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Now Palmer to throw on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. The Cardinals on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. From the gun, it's Palmer. It's caught, Nelson. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. That one goes for 24 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. handoff as they run the counter play and he's going to be stopped up at about the 47 yard line three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down well so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things but the defensive guys hey they just won the battle there it wasn't a big run given up they don't always have to absorb the body blow sometimes they dish them out themselves On second down, here's Palmer. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe-tap sequence, right? I was ready to call tippy-toes if that one was completed. The Cardinals on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, Palmer. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield, but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And here comes play number six on this drive. And here we go on first and goal. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get him in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert 
and fire out and create some space in the run game. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment, the defense. They'll step off the five Still yards. Standing. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. Toss. And he will push his way forward down to about the three yard line. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he'd go ahead and fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot on third down, I think he'd probably throw it here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. They, they won't even send in a running play here, I don't believe. I think they go ahead and try and throw it for a touchdown. That's on the veteran guard, Alex Boone. The offense on third down, they're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. And here is motion again, and that's going to be two in a row. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The Cardinals on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and goal. And now movement again, and they'll march even further backward. offense. So that'll back them up five. The Cardinals on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. And here is motion again, and that's gonna be two in a row. offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. The Cardinals on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This will be third and a mile. From the shotgun, it's Palmer. He's got his man. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. J.J. Nelson, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Cardinals have taken the lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic, but usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. And that one gives them a three-point lead. That time, a nine-play drive, and the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown.
Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They run. It's Gore. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. It's lining up first and ten. Let's go. Green, Back to the workhorse today. It's Gore. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. On the handoff, it's Gore. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. That's good for an Indianapolis first down on a gain of 10. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So here we go, first and ten now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game. And the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. they come to the line they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter but we'll return with more after this you're watching the nfl on ea sports back now in indianapolis it's been a very hotly contested game to this point just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter fake. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. The Colts on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and six. Looking to throw. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take this one down to the 20-yard line. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. 
This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. So a challenge is upon us. I tell you, close game, fourth quarter. This is a huge decision. Oh, no doubt about that, partner. A lot has to be riding on this call. And you know it is a tight one because it has to be indisputable visual evidence in order to change it. Now here's the big question. Do they actually have that evidence? We're about to find out. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. All right, all right, all right. All right, here we go. Three, 19. And this carry number 20 for Frank Gore. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the pickup, and that is going to set up a third and one. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. The Colts on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Back to throw here. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. And the points, they have come fast and furious in this quarter. You really don't want to be on the defensive side of the ball right now, do you? Because you're either thinking... My replacement may get an opportunity. <laughs> Your head better be on a swivel. Totally. Or maybe I just need to get out of the game for a while because I just can't slow these guys down. They've got to figure out a way to disrupt these offenses. And typically, one guy makes a big play, and that can help change things. They'll be looking for disruption on both sides right now. Throwing now. Palmer on first down. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. 
good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or? Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Well, when you go from second to four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. The Cardinals on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. Here it's third and three. From the gun, Palmer, and he's got Fitzgerald. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. To give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. down but not before getting this inside the 25 a really good pickup of 28 yards partners a lot of fun watching the nfl now isn't it because when the big fella runs routes it used to be when we were kids he'd run about three different routes and that was it now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there And now a first down following that long gain. Operating from the gun. Palmer, he's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And able to get this down inside the 15 to either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Ten more there and another first down. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. Do you know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. They go play action here on first down. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cardinals. A funny moment from 13 yards out. And the Cardinals have broken the tie. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. Point try now for Dawson. And they will take a seven point lead now. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it winds up in a touchdown for Arizona.
Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. This one taken from the seven. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now Tolzien, and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Caught left side by Hilton. And he's brought down after a good game. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Tight end right. Tight end right. All right, here we go. 3-19. 319. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. For plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm is confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Second down now after the incompletion. Play action. They'll throw. Completes it to Moncrief. Left side. He got 29 yards that time. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him, and he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. False start there. That will set the offense back five yards. Brandon, the lineman certainly flinched there before the snap. A good call. So that one will be accepted. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Hey, hey, right. Watch right, in. All right, here we go. Green, 39. They'll look to throw again. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. 
And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That throw good for four. It's second down. Led the NFL with 1,448 yards in 2016. The first Colt to do so since Reggie Wayne in 2007. How about this guy? He's been something. Yeah, four straight years now, over 1,000, and three straight Pro Bowls for T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, what I love about him, inside, outside, he can work it all. Movement there on the offensive line, a little quick, and a five-yard penalty. Tanked up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction defense. Jumpy on the right side Still of the line. Up. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. It's Gore. And he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They'll set up a throw. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. And here comes play number six on this drive. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. point attempt here. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So that drives seven plays in length, and the result for the Colts is a touchdown.
set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And our focus now moves on to Larry Fitzgerald. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now a play fake here on first down. And Gresham has it left side. A very solid gain of 27. And we continue to see another example here of offenses just going for it. And this game has really turned into a receiver's dream and a defender's nightmare because no one's being stopped throwing the ball downfield and points are going on the board. So the offense has it first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. Spins by. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Well, after those plays, the offense coordinator has to feel like he has balance in his favor. Threw it, then ran it, both for nice chunks of yardage. Now he feels like he's got things going in his direction, but the defensive coordinator, his guys are off balance a little bit. How does he set up, and what does he plan for in the next play? Is there a tendency there he can lock in on and maybe set his defensive call? So it'll be first down here after the run. Now a handoff here to his running back. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That was a really nice play. Be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one yard gain. See if they stay on the ground for second down. From the gun, Palmer. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. And they got to get to the 23 here on third. Operating from the gun, Palmer. In the middle of the field, he's got Nelson. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. On first and 10, it's Palmer. That is caught at the seven yard line. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. bootleg this will be caught at about the five 
That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Again, it's Palmer. And this is going to be incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not give it up six. So a pressure spot now for Phil Dawson. This to break our fourth quarter time. And Dawson's kick is good. And that will break our tie and give them a three-point lead. So the drive here ends with a field goal, and that does give them the lead, but this one is still a long ways from over. And you love to be able to look up at the scoreboard and see that you're out in front, but then you take one look across the field and see that offense is raring to come back out, and you think, I don't know, the field goals are going to be enough to get us home. Now after the main field goal, here's Dawson back out now to send this one away on the kickoff. This one taken from the seven. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Colts getting ready to go. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down into those starters blocks like you're a sprinter, get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. Frosty Rucker in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The offense certainly looking to score some points, but they also need ball security here late as we get down to the final right, moments of this Blue one. Lady. Blue lady. They'll set up to throw. They go with the screen to Gore. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It'll be a loss of a yard, and they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Time for a break. We'll come back, see what transpires after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over.
Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. to throw here. He's going to let it fly. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. It's another big shot dodge there defensively. Now just one more incompletion away from salting away this victory. And I know this feeling. They're almost giddy, but they have to stay focused and locked in. They can make one big mistake and throw it all away. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. He's back to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And boy, possession here turns over with the football already being in the red zone. So now it may look bleak, but this one not over. They do have all three timeouts. Even at this point on the field, where it looks like I mean, you're, you're really backed up, hold them to a field goal. That's the mantra right now. You hold them to a field goal, you still got a chance to take care of business on the other end. But you're right, the three timeouts are going to be key. How well they use them to preserve clock as well as stopping them, that's the key to giving them a chance to win. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Palmer apparently wants to throw it. This will be caught just inside the 10. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now it's Palmer. This will be caught at about the five. And another timeout taken by the Colts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment on defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Tight, tight. 
First and goal. Defense with their backs against the wall. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. to throw and this is caught and that could seal it it's a touchdown well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now but i'm looking at your face and i'm thinking i've got to be careful with that well it's a two score game you're inside of two minutes i think you can breathe relatively easily now yeah you can but still you got to stay vigilant can't give up anything cheap and easy that could put you in some jeopardy Now Dawson for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Just a four-play drive that time. And the Cardinals cap it with a touchdown. Here's Dawson now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again, but they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly, then they'll take it from there. Come out throwing here on first down. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. They'll drop to throw. A dump off here for Gore. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard. And they get up on it quickly and spike it with just a little over 50 seconds to go. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Now we've got whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. offense. An extra DB added here for the cards on third. Blitzer play coverage. Right, here we go. He'll look to throw. And escapes the sand. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. 
Frosty Rocker in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Try it here. He's back to throw. And he's got Moncrief. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. It's a pickup of 21. And it'll give the Colts a first down. Second and ten now. Watch left, watch left. Right, here we go. Green, now we've got Green, whistles and a flag. Looked like one of the Colts linemen might have jumped. False start. Offense. again and they'll march even further backward Foster, offense motion again and that's going to be two in a row offense. that one on the left tackle Anthony Costanzo even further backward. Ball start. Offense. Tolzine. He's going to let it fly. Incomplete. Almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. Fair to say the secondary play, whichever side you're on, hasn't really been a glowing exhibition so far, but a nice job there to prevent a long completion. I agree with you, but at some point, someone had to make a play and try and stop this exhibition of almost speed racing that we've been watching, huh? Yeah, it has been quarterback and receiver dominated. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. He'll look to throw. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for sack. Frosty Rocker in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Indy.